Hello, this is Ron Clark. I'd like to present to you an examination of the Gras Tree of Life. In his book, Sefer Yetzira, The Book of Creation, Arya Kaplan titled this image of the Tree of Life, The Natural Array. However, the only use of this image I've ever found was in association with a famous commentary on the Sefer Yetzira by the 18th century scholar Laya ben Shlomo Zalman known as the Vilna Gon, or genius of Vilna, Elijah of Vilna, or simply by his Hebrew acronym, GRA, which stands for Gaon Rabenu Eliyahu. Therefore, I call this the GRA tree in his honor. In his commentary, the GRA definitively proved that the Sefer Yetzirah, which is the oldest known Kabbalistic text in existence, refers to this natural array, and not to the more familiar Hebrew tree image. So let's begin with a comparison between the Gras tree and the more usual Hebrew tree. On the left is the Gras tree, and on the right, what I call the Hebrew tree, which is the, the standard image of the tree of life that you see everywhere. Looking at these two, you immediately see this incredible difference in structure. The Gras tree is completely symmetrical. It's much more integrated. There's less distance in general between the Sephirot. And the Hebrew tree is elongated. It's as if it's pulled down from Malkuth. And this great distance between Kether and Tiferet emerges. And it brings Tiferet down below Gedula and Gebura. And yes, saw down below Netzach and Hod. But in the Gras tree, Yesod is above Netzach and Had, and Tiferet is above Gedula and Gebura. With the Gras tree, there's just, like I said, a perfect symmetry. It is symmetrical from every angle, up, down, left, right, corner to corner. Each different quadrant has its own symmetry. But in the Hebrew tree, the only symmetry you find in the Hebrew tree is from the left side to the right side. Otherwise, there is no symmetry here other than that. An important thing in working with the Gras tree is to let go, completely ignore everything you've learned from the numbering sequence of the Hebrew tree. Because in the Gras tree, the sequence is different. The sequence begins to be different with Tiferet, which in the Gras tree is the fourth Sephirot. In the Hebrew tree, it's the sixth Sephirot. So you have to let go of this association of the number six with Tiferet, the number four with Gedula, because in the Gras tree, it's number five, the number five with Gebura, because in the Gras tree, it's number six, and so on down the line. The only place where it is the same is with Kether, Hokma, Bina, and Malkuth. So take a few moments to just look at these two images and let their differences sort of sink in for a minute. And remember at all times that these are symbols. So when you have a longer path, it means there is a symbolically representing that it means there is a greater difference between these two levels of awareness. Now in the Gras tree, all the lettered paths are exactly the same length. There's the same distance between the Sephirot. The longer ones are only the three mother letters. In the Hebrew tree, Notice the very long path between Kether and Tiferet, between Chokma and Tiferet, and Bina and Tiferet. And likewise, the very long path between Netzach and Malkuth and Hod and Malkuth. These are twice as long. In other words, there's a twice as great a separation between these states of awareness illustrated here in the Hebrew tree than in the Gra tree. The Gra tree to me is universally accurate. It is accurate description, illustration of the structure of everything that exists physically, astrally, and mentally. The Hebrew tree, on the other hand, is really more an illustration specifically of the modern state of human awareness. This great distancing we experience from the supernal realm, from the source of all being where everything is united as a singular whole. 
and it also reflects many uh, religious doctrines, this idea of the fall of humanity, this separation from the one self. But the Graw tree does not illustrate any such fall. The Graw tree, therefore, really illustrates in human terms the awareness of the adept, one who has gone through this process of initiation and thus integrated the levels of awareness in this universal structure where Tiferet is intimately connected with the supernal realm. There is no abyss in the Gra tree, not like there is in the Hebrew tree. There's this great abyss, this great leap of understanding that the initiate must make in order to comprehend the eternal perspective, the non-sequential way of being. But in the Graw tree, there is no abyss. There is no struggle for the individual self to shift its awareness into the eternal perspective. That does not exist here. Thus, it illustrates to me the awareness of the adept, the fully integrated awareness. Here we have the secret, hidden, or as I prefer, unlettered paths or connections between the Sephiroth. The lettered connections or paths represent connections between these levels of awareness that are universally available to each thing. Each thing has these connections built in. They're hardwired in a way that we can really communicate about them to each other through these symbols of the letters. The unlettered paths, on the other hand, are individual experiences. Each individual thing experiences these connections between these levels of awareness uniquely, unique to that individual being. So we can't really universally describe them with the symbols of letters. So here I've used color as the way to illustrate these connections. So the Hebrew tree has 16 of these connections, and the Graw tree has 14. There are differences here in terms of, well, let's take one example. Tiferet. In the Hebrew tree, Tiferet has no unlettered paths. All of the connections Tiferet emanates are hardwired in, and all the connections coming into Tiferet are hardwired in and universal. In the Graw tree, Tiferet has two unlettered paths, the connection between Tiferet and Netzach and Tiferet and Hoth, these two aspects of the personality. So in the Graw tree, we're saying that these are unique to each individual being, these connections. They are not universally describable. They are not universally shared in that sense. Everything has this ability to connect these levels of awareness but the way in which they are connected is unique to each individual. In the Hebrew tree, these are simply universally applicable to all human beings, essentially. There are other connections that do not occur in the Gra tree. For example, in the Hebrew tree, Chokmah is connected with Gebura, and Bina is connected with Gejula. This connection does not occur in the Gra tree because Tiferet mediates between these. So, again, this points out the differences in structure, the different sort of awareness that is being described here. In the Gra tree, once again, everything is perfectly symmetrical, and everything is connected to the same degree, basically. In the Hebrew tree, it's asymmetrical except side to side, and there are all these different symbolic lengths, symbolic distances between levels of awareness. Most striking is the distance between Malkuth, the mundane awareness, and access to Chokmah and Bina. This is the greatest distance here in the Hebrew tree. And that's very illustrative of the mundane state of human awareness. Here we have the elemental or simple letters and their zodiacal attributions, the signs of the zodiac that are attributed to each letter. 
This is arranged in the true Hebrew sequence, not the Western Hermetic sequence, which just really has no uh, relationship to the actual sequencing in the Hebrew tradition. So as you see, in the Gra tree, once again, we have this perfect symmetry. And in the Hebrew tree, we have a great deal of asymmetry. On the right-hand side of the Gra tree, coming downward from the middle pillar to the pillar of mercy, we have all of the fire signs from Kether to Hokmah, we have Aries, from Tiferet to Gedula, we have Leo, from Yesod to Netzach, we have Sagittarius. Then from the middle pillar descending to the pillar of severity, we have all of the earth signs. From Kether to Bina, we have Taurus. From Tiferet to Gevura, we have Virgo. And from Yesod to Hod, we have Capricorn. Then, from the Pillar of Mercy, coming downward and into the middle pillar, we have all of the air signs. From Chokmah to Tiferet, we have Gemini. From Gedula to Yesod, we have Libra, from Netzach to Malkuth, we have Aquarius. And finally, from the Pillar of Severity coming down to the middle pillar, we have all the water signs. From Bina to Tiferet, we have Cancer. From Gebura to Yesod, we have Scorpio. From Hod to Malkuth, we have Pisces. The result is that, in, in this case, in both images of the tree. The right-hand side of the tree is composed of the fire and air signs. The left-hand side of the tree is composed of the earth and the water signs. In other words, the pillar of mercy side of the tree is electric, and the pillar of severity side of the tree is magnetic, earth and water versus fire and air. In this slide, we see the attribution of the mother letters to the horizontal paths on the Tree of Life. These are the only horizontal paths on the tree. At the top is Shin and fire. In the middle is Aleph and air. And at the bottom is Mem and water. As you can see, they're, they're in pretty much the same positions in both trees, but there's this, a significant difference here because the positioning of Tiferet specifically in the Hebrew tree is between the air and the water. It's below the air. In the Gra tree, it's between fire and air. It's above the air. It's causal, in other words, to the air, which represents the mental realm. In the Hebrew tree, it is a product of Aleph and Er in the mental realm. And uh, also, the positioning of Yesod is different. In the Hebrew tree, Yesod is below water. In other words, it is a product of the uh, astral realm. But in the Gra tree, it is creative of the astral realm. It is above Mem and water. And here we have the planetary attributions of the Tree of Life. Originally, the planets were not attributed to the Sephiroth. They were attributed only to the seven vertical paths. The association of planets and Sephiroth came much later than the Sephiroth Sira. As you can see, they're basically the same. The planets connect uh, you know, the same Sephiroth. But the significant difference is what paths are traversed by these connections. This is a very subtle aspect of working with the Tree of Life, taking into consideration the paths that one crosses as one uh, makes this journey of connecting these aspects of awareness. Let's take the path of Saturn, Beth, that connects Kether and Tiferet. In the Gra Tree, it bisects 
the path of Shin and fire up here in the supernal realm, the connection between Chokmah and Bina. In the Hebrew tree, however, it intersects that path of Shin and also, very significantly, the path of Aleph between Gejula and Gebura. So it is descending through two realms, basically, from the supernal realm into the mental realm, into the depths of the mental realm. In the Gra tree, this is not so. In the Gra tree, it's a very intimate connection. It's just this immediate product, really, of the supernal realm. Likewise, the path between Tiferet and Yesaw, the path of Resh, the sun, in the Gra tree, it bisects the path of Aleph and Er. And in fact, this intersection between Resh and Aleph is the exact center of the Gra tree. In the Hebrew tree, Tiferet is the spatially exact center of the tree. And the path of Resh in the Hebrew tree intersects the path of Mem. In other words, it is an astral occurrence, but in the Gra tree, it is a mental occurrence. The connection between Yesod and Malkuth, the path of Tav, which is associated with the moon, in the Hebrew tree, it sort of stands alone. It doesn't intersect anything. It just sort of dangles down there at the bottom, just sort of holding on to Malkuth. But in the Gra tree, it's much more integrated. It crosses Mem. The astral realm. It is the astral connection, if you will, between Yesod, the astral self, and Malkuth, the material self, the mundane self. Of greatest importance in understanding the, the Gra tree is, of course, working with the Gra tree. And essential to that is uh, understanding each of the ten perspectives that are available here within the Gra tree, the experience of each of the different Sephirotic states. So the next uh, several slides will be about the different perspectives inherent to both trees. And I'll be focusing more on the Gra tree than on the Hebrew tree, since you're already familiar with these perspectives. So here we have the perspectives of Kether. And of course, Kether is emanatory. It has nothing comes into Kether. It, it all goes out of Kether. So when you're standing in Kether, you're really looking down, as it were, at the rest of the tree. The differences between the experience of the Hebrew tree and the Gra tree is really just about the connection with Tiferet. This is the main difference here. Tiferet, from the Kether perspective of the Gra tree, is very, very close. It's an immediate product, really. It's as intimately connected with Kether as Hokma and Bina are. The only difference here between this connection between Hokma and Bina and Tiferet is that Tiferet passes through the path of Shin, of fire. The differences here between the Hebrew tree experience of Hokma and the Gra tree experience of Hokma look very subtle but in experience, they become very significant. The main difference is that Hokma does not connect with Gebura in the Gra tree. It does, in the Hebrew tree, connect with Gebura. Also, in the Hebrew tree, the connection with Tiferet crosses Aleph. In the Gra tree, the connection with Tiferet is much more intimate and does not cross Aleph. There is, of course, more symmetry in the Gra connections than in the Hebrew connections. And this connection between Hokma and Malkuth in the Hebrew tree is, feels very, very, very distant. In the Gra tree, it is not so distant. It's much more integrated into the whole. In the Gra tree, Hokma has six emanations. In the Hebrew tree, Hokma has seven emanations because of that additional connection with Gebura. In both trees, Kether has seven emanations. So in, in the Hebrew tree, Hokmah really mirrors the power of Kether as an emanator. But in the Gra tree, it is less 
of an emanator. It has six emanations instead of equaling Kepler seven. Likewise, here with the emanations of Bina, in the Gra tree, Bina does not have any connection with Gedula, but in the Hebrew tree it does. And the connection between the Gra Bina and Tiferet is very intimate and immediate. In fact, Tiferet number four is next in immediate sequence from Bina, but in the Hebrew tree, that connection passes through Aleph and is not an immediate connection. It goes from three to six instead of from three to four. And also the connection from Bina to Malkuth in the Hebrew tree is once again very distant in experience, but in the Gra tree it is much closer, much more integrated, much more intimate. Also, Bina in the Gra tree has five emanations. Hokma had six, Kether had seven. So there is this diminishing of emanatory power, if you will. In the Hebrew tree, Bina has six emanations, of course, because of its connection to Gedjula. So there is a similar diminishing of emanatory power here, but it is less rapid. Okay, here is where the fun really begins. Here in Tiferet is where the greatest difference between the experience of these two trees really emerges. And from here on out, the experience is of each Sephiroth is really quite radically different than the experience of the Hebrew tree. With Tiferet, looking up from Tiferet, as it were, the connection with Bina is immediate and completely intimate. Same with Hokma and Kether. From Tiferet, these are immediately accessible. There is no real radical shift of awareness. Tiferet is still the core of the individual self, the essential self, the temporal mental body, just like it is in the Hebrew tree, except here it is not separate in the same uh, sense and to the same degree from Bina. Bina is the direct and immediate progenitor of Tiferet. One thing that always confused me and, and puzzled me about the Hebrew tree is when I'm in Bina and I experience my connection with my Tiferet, my individual self, this thread between that connects my greater self and my individual self. To me, that is always an immediate and direct connection. In the Hebrew tree, that is such a long connection. It passes through all these other layers before Tiferet comes into being. But in the Gra tree, it's an immediate connection. And that corresponds with my experience. In my experience of Bina is that the greater selves are projecting individuals. That is what they project, our individual selves. And it is this projection of individual selves that immediately creates the temporal sequential realm. It doesn't go through these phases of Gejula and Gebura before it, uh, the individual self appears, you know, because it's really this projection of the individual that creates the temporal realm. In the Gra tree, it perfectly illustrates my experience, at least, of being in Bina and uh, the experience of the greater selves projecting the individuals and that that is what causes the temporal sequential realm immediately, not later on, as it were, after going through these phases. It's this immediate projection. Also, from Tiferet in the Gra tree, Tiferet is generative. It's emanatory of Gejula and Gebura. It is not the product of Gejula and Gebura. So the whole relationship between the individual self 
And these aspects of the individual self get Jula and Gibura is different. In fact, in the Gra tree, the path of Teth, which runs between Tiferet and Gedjula, it runs from Tiferet to Gedjula. In the Hebrew tree, that same path runs from Gedjula to Tiferet. In other words, we're shifting the flow, the direction of flow of that path of Teth. And likewise, with the path of Yod. In the Gra tree, it goes from Tiferet to Gebura. In the Hebrew tree, it's from Gebura to Tiferet. So this completely shifts this perspective. So the Gra Tiferet, from this perspective, Gejula is an emanation, a product of the individual self. It is part of the individual self. It's a matter of choice in this sense. Not The individual self is not a product of the Gedjula. So this changes Gedjula entirely. And likewise, from Tiferet and the Gra tree, Gebura is a product, a choice, an aspect of the individual self and not an emanator of the uh, causer of the individual self. The individual self causes Gebura. So Gebura, likewise, in the Gra experience, is completely different. The other differences here have to do primarily with Netzach and Hot. In the Gra tree, these are unlettered paths, which, as I said before, are indicative of a unique experience that is so unique to each individual self that it cannot be communicated, really, in terms of the, the, the letters as symbols. In the Hebrew tree, these are lettered paths. These are the paths of Lamed, Libra, and Nun, Scorpio. But in the Gra tree, Lamed goes from Gejula to Yesod, and Scorpio goes from Gebura to Yesod, instead of from Tiferet to Netzach and Tiferet to Hod, as they do in the Hebrew tree. And astrologically, this makes just so much more sense. Also, the connection between Tiferet and Yesod, the mental self and the astral self, the individual and the personal. Here it crosses Aleph. In the Hebrew tree, it crosses Mem. And Yesod is the product of the astral realm instead of being the causor of the astral self. So again, this changes all of these relationships quite radically. Another difference between these two perspectives is that Tiferet has five emanations in the Gra tree. In the Hebrew tree, it has only three. Furthermore, in the Gra tree, Tiferet receives the input from only three Sephiroth, Kether, Hokma, and Bina. In the Hebrew tree, it receives the emanation from five Sephiroth. Kether, Hokma, Bina, Gejula, and Gebura. So in the Gra tree, Tiferet is much more primal. It's much more causative, much more emanatory than in the Hebrew tree. In other words, it's much more powerful. It's much more central. The two main differences between the Hebrew tree, Gejula, and the Gra tree, Gejula, are that first, the Gra tree, Gajula, is below Tiferet. It is a product of Tiferet. In the Hebrew tree, it stands above Tiferet and is really the product of Bina. The second great difference is that in the Gra tree, Gajula receives no influence from Bina. In the Hebrew tree, it receives its primary influence from Bina initial influence from Bina. So, this placing of 
schedula bilotifera in the grot tree and extracting any influence from the pillar of severity creates a situation where gedula is to tiferet in the grot tree in the same relationship that chokma is to kether. In fact, in the grot tree, tiferet is a kether. It has the same sort of powers as kether, but at a lower level. And likewise, yesod is a tiferet, or an even lower version of kether. So each of the middle pillar sephirot is a complete self-enclosed, as it were, unit of awareness. Starting with Kether, then Tiferet, then Yesod, and then Malkuth. So here with Gejula, shares all these commonalities with Hokma. It is the continuity, the thread of sameness that exists within everything within the mental realm. Where the temporal moment of now originates with this projection by Bina of Tiferet through the path of Cheth, the chariot in the Tarot, here in Gejula we find the glue of continuity that binds all of these temporal moments, these temporal experiences of this now, this ever-present now moment. Uh, Gejula is the continuity within all of that experience. The Gra tree Gebura is different from the Hebrew tree Gebura in much the same way that Gedulas were different. Gebura is below Tiferet in the Gra tree and it receives no influence from the pillar of mercy other than Gejula. It's direct influence from Gejula. It receives no influence from Hokma. So it is very much a manifestation of the pillar of severity. In the Grotri, the experience of Gebura is very much like the experience of Bina, and it stands in relationship to Tiferet in the same way that Bina stands in relationship to Kether. Gebura is the mother, if you will, of Yesod in the same way that Bina is the mother of Tiferet. Gebura is the point at which the individual self projects into and creates the astral realm. Gebura in the Gra tree is this defining, this separating in the sense of the solidifying of uniqueness. And here is where the sequential experience of the ever-present now moment, this experience we call time, is set into motion. In the Hebrew tree, Gebura serves a slightly different function. It is really the defining of uniqueness uh, on a cosmic level. But in the Gra tree, that, that function is softened somehow. It's not quite as severe. It's not quite as energetic in, in the sense of it being all about change and, and the friction between differences. In the Gra tree, it, it is more just about defining uniqueness. The differences here in Yesod between the two trees are just as significant as the differences in Tiferet between the two trees. Yesod is above Netzach and Hod in the Gra tree and creates them instead of being the product of Netzach and Hod. It is the direct product, the direct emanation, as it were, of Gebura in the Gra tree instead of Hod and Netzach in the Hebrew tree. It stands below Aleph and above Mem in the Gra tree. In the Hebrew tree, it stands below Mem. So it is the product of the astral realm instead of being the causor of the astral realm as it is in the Gra tree. Again, the similarities between Yesod and Tiferet in the Gra tree really need to be examined. It is a lower 
Tiferet in this sense. It is, again, a complete self-contained quantity of awareness, but this time it is an astral awareness instead of a mental awareness. A special note here is that the path coming from Gebura forming Yasad is in the Gra tree, Nun, which corresponds to Scorpio. In the Hebrew tree, it is Samic, which corresponds to Capricorn. So there's an entirely different meaning to this emanation of Yesod in the Gra tree. Yesod, in the same way that Tiferet stands at the edge of the sequential realm, Yesod stands at the edge of the minute present moment. Our experience, our, our mundane experience of the present moment as a very finite thing filled with change. Well, Yesod stands at the very edge of that experience. It creates Netzach and Chod. These two aspects of the personal self are in the Gra tree intentional created manifestations of the astral self instead of being causal aspects of the astral self, the personality. The Gra tree Netzach is actually quite similar in experience to the Hebrew tree Netzach. The main differences here are that it is below Yesod and it has only two emanations in the Gra tree. The emanation to Hod and the emanation to Malkuth. In the Hebrew tree, it creates Yesod. In terms of the Gra tree Netzach, it is the Hokma of Yesod in the same sense that Gejula is the Hokma of Tiferet. So it serves this function of connecting the Yesod to the entire astral realm. And this is through significance, emotional relevance, the relationship of one astral being to all the other astral beings, and the commonalities that all astral beings share, this experience of significance. As with Netzach, the Gra tree Hod is in experience very similar to the Hebrew tree Hod. And the differences are essentially the same. The Gra tree Hod exists below Yesod. It is a product of Yesod. And it has only one emanation to Malkuth instead of the two emanations that it has in the Hebrew tree. It is in relation to Yesod the same a sort of relationship that Gebura has to Tiferet and Bina to Kether. So it is generative. It is the mother of Malkuth in this sense. This is the part of the astral being that projects the mundane awareness. And Hod is all about uniqueness and defining the unique quantas of significance that uh, exist defining them as unique and separate entities. And here we have Malkuth. The differences in experience of the Gra tree Malkuth versus the Hebrew tree Malkuth are really not that extreme, but the differences are nonetheless important to note. Malkuth, in both cases, receives the same number of influences from the same sources, but they receive them in a different sequence. And this is to say, in the symbolic language, with different strengths. In the Hebrew tree, the strongest influence on Malkuth is from Yesod. It's the immediate precursor to Malkuth. In the Gra tree, it's Hod. Hod is the immediate precursor to Malkuth. So the strongest influence is from Hod. The second strongest influence is from Netzach. And the third strongest influence is from Yesod. Instead of that being the primary influence, 
is the third influence. The influences from Gejula, Gebura, Hokma, and Bina occur in the same sequence as they do in the Hebrew tree. But in the Gra tree, the connections are shorter. And again, in the symbolic language, this means that the connections are more intimate and stronger than in the Hebrew tree. So Malkuth in the Gra tree is much more integrated into the whole. There is much easier access from the mundane awareness to all of these higher levels of awareness. And here in closing is an illustration of how the four Kabbalistic worlds relate to these two different tree images. The four Kabbalistic worlds are first Atzaluth, which is the archetypal realm. This is the archetypal relationship of forces, of aspects of being that are repeated in each of the other three realms. In the Gra tree and the Hebrew tree, this is a triangle formed by Kether, Chokmah, and Bina. These are the three archetypal aspects of being. Bria is the creative realm. This is the generation, if you will, of the temporal sequential realm, which mirrors the eternal archetypal realm. In the Gra tree, it is a rectangle composed of Chokma, Bina, Gejula, and Gebura, with Tiferet at the center. In the Hebrew tree, it is a downward-pointing triangle composed of Gejula, Gebura, and Tiferet alone. And the difference here is that in the Gra tree, the source is all important in each of the next realms. The creative realm of Bria is really the mental realm. And the source of the mental realm is all important here. In the Hebrew tree, there's this disconnect. This is the abyss between the archetypal realm and the creative or mental realm. In the third realm is Yetzirah, the formative realm, the astral realm. In the Gra tree, once again, the source of this astral realm is all important. So it is composed of Gejula, Gebura, Netzach, and Hod, with Yesod right at the center. In the Hebrew tree, it is simply Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Again, the source is not included, and there is this disconnection between the personal self and the individual self. No such disconnection is apparent in the Gra tree. And finally, the realm of Asya, the fourth world, the material realm, the realm of making. And in the Gra tree, the source, the astral source, is all important. So the realm of Asya is composed of Netzach, Hod, and Malkuth. In the Hebrew tree, there is, again, this separation, and the Asiya is represented only by Malkuth itself, all by itself alone, way down at the bottom, separate from everything. So, once again, the Gra tree is an integrated expression. It is a symbol of the integration of awareness in its natural, pristine state. Now we will look at the Gras tree of life itself. We will begin by actually building the Gras tree in what I call the creative sequence. This is the sequence from which the ordering of the gates that I will be presenting later is derived. This is the Briatic sequence. This is based on the Kabbalistic concept that each sephirot contains within itself everything that follows it, everything that comes beneath it. So Kether contains within itself the entire tree. Hokma contains within itself everything below Hokma, which is Bina, Tiferet, Gejula, Gebura, Yesod, Netzach, Hod, and Malkuth. But you'll notice Kether does not manifest direct connections with everything that it contains. 
In other words, it does not have a direct linear connection with Yesod or Malkuth. Similarly, Chokmah does not have a direct linear connection with Gebura or with Netzach, even though it contains those aspects within itself. So this is what is illuminated, really, by the building of the tree in this sequence and then driving the gates, which will follow. So let's move on to rather swiftly building the tree of life. I won't comment on this part. We'll just have it as a slideshow presentation. So, now that we've finished building the tree, let's look at each individual sephirot and examine the connections that they make to other sephirot. We'll start with their emanations. So here with Kether, we have the emanation of Kether to Hokma to the letter He, which is Ares, from Kether to Bina to the letter Vav, which is Taurus, Kether to Tiferet with the letter Beth, which is the planet Saturn, and then unlettered connections between Kether and Gejula, Kether and Gebura, Kether and Netzach, and Kether and Hod. And Hakma makes six direct connections. The first with Bina, to the letter Shin, or the mother letter of fire. Second to Tiferet, to the letter Zain, which is Gemini. Third with Gejula, to the letter Gimel, which is Jupiter. Fourth is an unlettered connection with Yesod. Fifth, an unlettered connection with Hod. And sixth, an unlettered connection with Malkuth. And Bina makes five direct connections. First, with Tiferet, through the letter Heth, or Cancer. Second, with Gebura, through the letter Daleth, or Mars. Third is an unlettered connection with Yesod. Fourth, an unlettered connection with Netzach. And fifth, an unlettered connection with Malkuth. And Tiferet makes five connections. The first is with Gedjula, through the letter Teth, or Leo. Second 
is with Gebura, with the letter Yod, or Virgo. Third is with Yesod, to the letter Resh, or the Sun. Fourth is an unlettered connection with Netzach. And fifth is an unlettered connection with Pod. And Gijula makes four direct connections. The first is with Gebura, to Aleph, the mother letter of Er. The second is with Yesod, to the letter Lamed, which is Libra. Third is with Netzach, to the letter Kaf, which is Venus. And fourth is an unlettered connection with Malkuth. Gebura has three direct connections. The first is with Yesod, to the letter Nun, which is Scorpio. The second with Hod, to the letter Pe, which is Mercury. And the third is an unlettered connection with Malkuth. Yesod also has three direct connections, all of which are lettered paths. The first is with Netzach to the letter Samech, which is Sagittarius. The second is with Hod to the letter Oyin, which is Capricorn. And the third is with Malkuth to the letter Tav, which is Moon. Netzach makes two direct connections, both of them lettered paths. The first is with Hod to the letter Mem, which is the mother letter of water. The second is with Malkuth through the letter Tzadi, which is Aquarius. And Hod makes one lettered connection with Malkuth through the letter Kuf, which is Pisces. And Malkuth, of course, has no emanations. It is a completely receptive vessel. So let's look now at the sources of the Sephirot. Malkuth has seven sources. Of most importance and greatest strength is its connection with Hod through the path of Kuf and Pisces. Next in terms of strength is its connection with Netzach through the path of Tzadi, Aquarius. And third is its connection with Yesod, through the path of Tav, the moon. Then we have unlettered connections with Gebura, with Gejula, with Bina, and with Hokma. Hod has six sources, the strongest of which is from Netzach, through the letter Mem, the mother letter of water. Second is from Yesod, through Oyin, and Capricorn. Third is from Gebura through the letter Pe, which is Mercury. And then we have three unlettered connections with Tiferet, then Chokmah, and Kether. Netzach has five sources. First is from Yesod through the letter Samech, which is Sagittarius. Second is from Gejula through the letter Kaf which is Venus. Third is an unlettered connection with Tiferet. Fourth, an unlettered connection with Bina. And fifth, an unlettered connection with Kether. Yesod also has five sources. First is a connection with Gebura to the letter Nun, which is Scorpio. Second, with Gejula to the letter Lamed, which is Libra. Third, with Tiferet, through the letter Resh, which is Sun. Fourth, is an unlettered connection with Bina. And fifth, an unlettered connection with Hokma. Gibura has four sources. First and foremost, is a connection with Gejula, through the letter Aleph, or Er. Second, is with Tiferet, through the letter Yod, which is Virgo. Third is with Bina, to the letter Daleth, which is Mars. And fourth is an unlettered connection with Kether. Gejula has three sources. First is from Tifereth, to the letter Teth, which is Leo. Second, from Hokma to the letter Gimel, which is Jupiter. And third is an unlettered connection with Kether. Tiferet has three sources, all of them 
two lettered paths. The first is with Bina, through the letter Cheth, which is Cancer. Second is with Chokmah, through the letter Zayin, which is Gemini. And third is with Kether, through the letter Beth, which is Saturn. Bina has two sources. First and foremost is with Chokmah, through the letter Shin, or fire. Second is with Kether, through the letter Vav, or Taurus. And Hakma has only one source, which is Kether, through the path of He, or Aries. So, in closing, the final ingredient in truly understanding the Gra tree of life is to look at the polarities that are inherent to this structure and their symbolic significance. At the top of the frame here, we see the polarity of Kether and Malkuth. Kether is purely emanative. Malkuth is purely receptive. It receives all of these influences. It is the vessel that holds, while Kether is the vessel that gives. In the bottom part of this frame, we see the mirror image between Tiferet and Yesod. Tiferet receives three influences, Yesod emanates three influences. Tiferet emanates five influences, Yesod receives five influences. They are perfect mirror images of each other. And this really expresses how Yesod, the astral personality, is intended to be a mirror of the essential self, the individual self. In this frame, we have another important set of mirroring symmetry inherent to this structure of the tree. At the top, we have the mirror between Chokmah and Bina. Each of these has seven connections. Here they are mostly emanatory. Then we come down to the bottom of the page and we have the mirror between Netzach and Hoth. And each of these has seven connections. And these, though, are mostly receptive connections. So there is this left to right mirroring and this top to bottom mirroring. Again, the top of the frame here is about the origins of the two pillars of mercy and severity. And in the bottom of the frame, it's about the mirroring between the two terminuses, the two foundations, if you will, of the pillars of mercy and severity. And here we have a very important polarity, the left to right polarity, between Gejula, the pillar of mercy, and Gebura, the pillar of severity. They are each pure. They do not receive any influence from the opposing pillar except through Aleph, the path of air that connects Gejula to Gebura. They are defining the two pillars. And it's no error that these two pillars are named after these two sephirot, Gejula, Mercy, Gebura, severity. And here is our final slide in this series. A really important feature of this polarity and symmetry of the Gra tree that just does not exist at all in the Hebrew tree is the two hexagons, two natural hexagons that are formed. The upper hexagon I call the hexagon of the sun or Tiferet. This is the individual self. The lower hexagon I call the hexagon of the moon, or Yesod. This is the personal self. And here, at long last, are the 182 gates formed within the Gra tree of life. I've presented them here in the Briatic or Creative Sequence. And I'm not going to be narrating any of this. I'm going to just present it to you in the form of a moderately paced slideshow. So enjoy.